All right, welcome back, Fight Fans. This is your boy, Ak. And I'm Barack, the Boxing Bully. Listen, we knew we were going to get Fireworks. Big light heavyweight showdown this past weekend. We didn't know they were going to go off that early, though. I mean, look, we no, knew... we didn't know, but we didn't know it was going to be all one-sided. Well, well, well maybe I we know. didn't. Well, I, you know, I figured like, you know, fireworks go off on the 4th of July. This looks like it happened on the 2nd or maybe the 1st early. Like, we didn't expect Joe Smith to not be a threat in that fight. And maybe he was a threat, but Arthur just, uh, better be if didn't give him a sh an opportunity to land any big shots. But it looked like from the beat, from the very beginning, looked like Joe Smith was a bit flat footed and maybe not as fast as I expected. Now. He could have been in shape. He looked like he was in shape. But I think that the, what really showed in this particular showdown between Arthur Bedebiev and Joe Smith for the unification like heavyweight showdown was that Arthur Bedebiev is a better boxer than most people thought. I mean, we've seen him get hit in the past, but he set traps. He countered well. He showed speed. He showed that he is a, a, a threat, a boogeyman. I don't know. I mean, there's so many names that you could call this guy. But he's a power puncher with both hands. Third round stoppage for Arthur Better BF. He is the unified, unified three belts in the light, light heavyweight division. All I can think of is one thing after that fight, Barack. Guess what? what? Dimitri Bivol. That's right. That's the fight that I need to see. That's the fight that the boxing, uh, uh, the boxing community should be demanding. You know, I, I can't say that I didn't expect this. I can only say that I was hoping for a better fight. Um, it's kind of hard not to root for Joe Smith because, you know, he's that common man, you know, but you, I can tell you something that's not common. You know, that's his nickname. What's not common is that a guy that comes from the amateurs, he had a long amateur career, and that's better be if, uh, he was a two-time Olympian. And what's not common is that he had a whole bunch of knockouts even way back then, you know? So this is somebody who made it to the Olympics twice. He can box already. <laughs> but he also had a pro style way back then, knocking out so many people. He probably has more knockouts than anybody. I don't know. You know, so he had power way back then, and he had that pro style way back then, and he can box back then. So think about it. The actual better boxer won. The first knockdown in the first round was a counterpunch. Uh -huh. Joe was doing his slow jabs. It was, I call it like a meaningless jab because it was right. for nothing. It wasn't setting up anything, right. and he, he slipped it. And he counterpunched it better be and, and he better be and he dropped them. You yeah. know, so the better boxer won. And this is somebody that we knew he has boxing skills, but right. the better the boxer, the better the opposition. We've also seen better be outboxed right. until he stops the guy. Uh, so it's, it's really about who the opponent is. Listen, um, there were no adjustments by Joe Smith in his corner, even though the fight only went a uh, uh, couple of rounds. The, the fact that he was able to land that right hand early, there were no adjustment from his corner to get away from that right hand, keep the left hand up, or maybe slip it, count over the left hook to the body or left hook to the head. We didn't see any of that. So looks like Arthur had his number, point blank, period. Now, the, yeah, I think, I think but, but Barack, hold, hold on. I, I just want to jump in on here. We, we know that in the, in, at this level in the sport, you know, these fighters are brave and they're willing to get in the ring with anybody, especially at the world-class level. But... A guy that keeps proving that he hits that hard, will he keep people at bay? Meaning, to make the fight. Will Dimitri Bavo, uh feel like, hey, uh, is this, this fight is a risky fight. There are other fights out there that are big money fights. Or does he want to chase legacy and become undisputed against a guy who, to the casual community, is not very popular. But in the boxing world, he is very dangerous and a, a friend, friendly fighter. But does it make a ton of money for Bavo? Does it, can the fight even be made with ESPN and the zone with both guys on, on separate sides of the street? Is that a fight that Bavol will chase? Of course. That, uh, I think that's a fight. I think that's the only fight that makes sense. I mean, even Bavol says that him beating Canelo doesn't do anything for his status in the light heavyweight division because he beat a small guy. He said he's not going to consider himself great or higher on the pound for pound list until he beats Baturbiev and gets the other belts. And that just makes sense. Have we seen that happen in the light heavyweight division before where uh, the guys don't meet with all the belts? Yeah, Kovalev and Stevenson. And that was a horrible time period where these guys didn't fight each other. I don't think 
Breder BF or Bival is going to let this opportunity pass, streets or not. You right. know, I think this is a fight that needs to happen. I think it should happen. And you, you want to see what happens when a pressure fighter gets pressured. You know, you want to see what happens when a pressure fighter fights somebody his size or to fight somebody that can that can control the distance. Now, well, even bigger. I think Bivol has the power to hurt anybody, you know, but is he going to use that against a better BF? Probably not. He's going to use his distance the same way he did Canelo and then strike when he can. And, and that's what I think happened to Joe Smith. He's a pressure fighter that probably only has that one style and he got pressured now even after the first knockdown what did joe smith do he didn't get up and use distance he, he got up and went straight forward again and then got countered again showed, showed got, a lot it showed again. a lot showed a lot of heart and the type of fight he is and barack you said that no fight no other fight makes sense i totally agree with you but we all know what happened that night in the garden anthony yard all the way from across the pond they're talking about the next fight for but better be it. Now, look, uh, no no disrespect to Yard. I mean, I, if he has the opportunity to fight a better be it and become unified champion, you know, more power to him. I mean, I, I wish him well in that fight. But I'm saying in terms of what fight makes sense, we all know that right now, like, it's been hot. The undisputed, those undisputed straps have been hot. Devin Haney just became undisputed. Jamel Charles just became undisputed. Uh, Kalisha Shields, two-time undisputed. Canelo just became undisputed. You know, that list... Right, that's right. That list is getting longer, right? And I'm pretty sure Better BF or Bavo want to be next on that list. The fight needs to happen now. Yeah. Um, Bivol and Better BF, those guys are so focused and so determined. Uh, Better BF reminds me of uh, Khabib Nurmagomedov. You know, uh, just really, really disciplined, really, really high skilled in, in what he does and, and a long, long amateur pedigree. You know, I, I think that it's the only thing that I think is his issue is that he stayed in the amateurs for a very long time, probably till he was late 20, 27 years old. And now that he's gaining popularity, he's old already. He just started gaining popularity a couple of years ago and he's already 37 years old. He yeah, has he, no time. But he's not showing signs of age for the time is not caught up to him yet. So, yes, I, I agree with you. you know, he's yeah, that's, like, that's like Triple G. You know what I'm saying? Triple G is 40 years old. He's still looking good, still looking sharp. People always say, oh, he slowed down a little step. What, what are you, timing him? Stop. Stop your lying. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. He's winning. He's always somebody who's gotten hit, you know, but he's stopping guys the same way he's always done. Has you know, and, and that's the thing. So we just need him to fight somebody who's just as skillful and is going to come in there confident. I think Joe Smith is a very, very hard puncher. I don't think he was somebody that was super confident and I'm going to knock this guy out. That's not how he talks. That's not how he, he And he, he didn't even get an opportunity to land a flush shot. A lot of most of the shots landed on the glove. He couldn't get it off. Now, look, credit to Joe Smith. Showed a lot of heart. Kept coming forward against the better fighter, the harder puncher, and we all saw the turnout. Uh, hopefully, Joe Smith recovers uh, and maybe comes back uh, you know, with an opponent where he can gain his confidence again. But uh, Archer better be if moves on. Maybe we see Anthony Yard. Hopefully, we see before before the years up for another uh, undisputed uh, light heavyweight match. Yeah, I, you, you want to see straps against straps. You want to see an undisputed fight. Um, I, I, let's just say if Joe Smith came back and forth, Anthony Yardi on the same card as Baturbiev Bivol. Imagine that. That's I like incredible. It. I like the two it. winners fight each other. I like it. I like it. For more on that story, if you haven't had enough uh, of Better Beer and Joe Smith, go to the Zone News. They got you covered and everything else boxing. Love those guys over there. And that's it for us today. Peace and love. Stay safe. Out.